Hello, welcome to another episode of my mini-series about UK woodland. Today we'll be looking at a few of the mushrooms and fungi that we have on offer. First of all, if you're going to go out on the forage for mushrooms, I would suggest it's a good idea to get a decent foraging handbook or reference book. The one that I use is one that I started out with, is Food for Free by Richard Maybe. Um, and this is one that I would suggest getting hold of. It's got some really good uh, colour photos in there, colour pictures, um, and a really good detailed design. What it also does is gives you the season when that particular food or uh, mushroom is in season. So it's really easy to help identify them. The first one we have isn't widely considered edible, but it is still useful. It's called a birch polypore. Although not considered edible, they still have many uses. The flesh on the underside can be cut out and used as a plaster uh, and it wraps around your finger quite well. Um, it also can be used for stropping a knife, so if you wanted to give your knife a bit of an edge you can, you can use the top of that. I've tried that a few times and it, is, it isn't that easy because of the way in which the mushroom is clearly. What's really good about this um, mushroom however is its antimicrobial properties. It was found dried and threaded through, through, through some rawhide on Otzi, the Iceman. Um, from the Neolithic era, so even back then they knew of its antimicrobial properties. Although this series is predominantly about edible species, I've just found this, which is called Destroying Angel, and as the name suggests, it's highly poisonous. So I I'm gonna put it down now and give my hands a really good wash. So right next to the Destroying Angel over there, I found these little fellas, uh, which are called the Common Puffball. These are really easy to identify as they are covered in loads of little pimples. Um, these are totally edible. You can cut them in half, stuff them, uh, and then cook them like a roasted pepper, and they're quite good. This really horrible looking fungus is called Jew's ear. Although jelly-like, this fungus is quite tough. The best way to prepare this fungus is to boil it in boiling water and then allow it to dry out completely. Once you've done that, grind it up into a powder and then use it as a sprinkling for flavouring. This is called Jew's ear because it grows predominantly on elder trees. Uh, an elder is the tree that Judas is said to have hanged himself from after leading the Romans to Jesus. So this final fungus is one I'm not going to pick, and for good reason. This is a giant puffball, a relative of the common puffball we saw earlier. Now these can get enormous, these can get to the size of a football and even bigger. So I'm going to leave these guys where they are and see how big they can get. So giant puffballs aren't endangered or anything like that. I'm simply leaving those ones there to see how big they'll get. I've seen in reference books and online, some have got sort of the size of footballs and bigger, which is really good because they're perfectly edible. You can slice them up, dip them in a simple batter, and then fry them up and eat them just like giant puffball steaks. So it's currently mid-October here in the UK and a really good time, beginning of autumn, to be spotting these mushrooms and fungi. So I implore you to get outside and have a look. Get yourself a decent guidebook and see what you can spot and let me know in the comments section down below. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next one.